Hello everyone, Elias5891 here with another Contain Module tutorial. This time we are going over the Combination Locks module. You can see here, looks like a Combination Lock. Uh, this one you won't see a lot of play on. And uh, to explain why, uh, I need to give you a little bit of uh, extra information about the way a bomb traditionally is made. Uh, you always have a serial number. And then you have your indicators and your batteries and your ports. But those components, your battery casings, your indicators, and your port plates, there's always a grand total of five of them, sans some manipulation through another mod. As such, you're, you're limited. You're not going to get a ton. The combination lock has a new widget that goes with it. Uh, here it is. It is called the two-factor widget. Uh, if you're not familiar with two factor authentication. Essentially you have two methods that you have to confirm who you are. One of which is something that changes, such as those did, periodically. Uh, it's an interesting security feature which is beyond the scope of what we're talking about here on whether or not it's a good idea. But it is used in this particular module. Now the module is built that it can work without it but a lot of people find the module to lose a lot of the the luster of it if you don't have the two-factor. On the flip side, you only get five of these things. In this case, I have a port plate, an indicator, a port plate, and then two of the, rem the remaining two are both two-factors. That eats into the stuff that other modules might use to assess conditions, to analyze, to decide what rules are going to be applied. And a lot of people don't like devoting, you know, potentially one, two, three of those widgets to a single module, much less a module that may or may not even occur. However, that's the way of it. Uh, so we're going to do this once with the, the two-factor widget on. Then we're going to take it off and do it again so you can see the difference. Um, with this, it's a combination lock, you need three numbers. You're going to turn right to a number, left to a number, right to a number. These numbers, as we, I can scroll this here, click all the way up to 19 and then back to zero. And we're going to use our rules here to, determination, to determine the combination. Now I'm going to put some Instead of actually plugging in all the values, I'm going to actually write out some of the formula instead. Because with the two-factor, things can change. And by the time I get done explaining it, I mean, the two-factor is already different than they were before. And if I'm not mistaken, they change about every 60 seconds. So I think we should see them change right about here. Yep. Uh, so let's figure out the basics of it. Get, you know, kind of the skeleton outline of our calculations. And then we can do the two-factor on a change. So, to determine a combination, for the first number, we're going to add the least significant digit of each two-factor. The least significant digit is the one with the smallest place value. That would be the one furthest to the right. And to distinguish these, they have a little dot on the bottom right side. So this one up here is 242-990-323-829. That way you don't say, coming from this side, and you're like, why is it 628E2E? No. The dot indicates the bottom right. So we're going to add least significant digit of each two-factor. If there are no two-factor codes, well there are, so we can skip that step for now. We're going to add the number of batteries. Uh, we don't have any batteries though, the two-factors ate them all. So we're just going to add the least, common, uh, the least significant digit of the two two-factors. Uh, subtract 20 if the result exceeds 19. It's not going to because obviously a single digit plus single digit is not going to break 20. So that's going to give us our first number, which is a right. Then for the left number, uh, we're going to add the most significant digit of each two factor. So that's going to be the leftmost number, the one with the highest place value. Uh, we do have two factor codes, so we can skip rule two. We're going to add the number of solved modules. Now, notice I've, I've intentionally thrown in something else that's really easy to solve. But at the moment, we don't have any solved modules, so we don't have to add anything to that. Again, we're going to subtract 20 if we're over 19, but we're not going to be, because again, we're going to add two single-digit numbers. 
And then for our last number, our third number, uh, we're going to add the first two. And subtract 20 if we go over 19. Okay, there's the beep. That means it just changed. So let's do this one real quick. Uh, for my right turn, I'm going to add the least significant digits. That's the 6 here plus the 2 here gives me 8. For the second one, I'm going to add the most significant digits. That's the 4 and the 5. That's going to give me 9. And for my last digit, I just add the first two numbers. 8 and 9 gives me 17. None of them exceeded 20, so I don't have to manipulate. That's what I'm going to flip to. So I'm going to do right 8, left 9, right 17. Green. Uh, let's go ahead and solve this as well. So now I've got two solved modules. So not a huge change. I uh, still don't have any batteries, so this isn't going to change any. But this now is going to add 2 to it, because I have two solved modules. That does mean if you have a bunch of combination locks, the answers will change ever so slightly. Oh, there's the beep. So our least significant digits are 9 and 0. 9 plus 0 gives me 9 for my first number. My most significant digits, 9 and 2 plus the 2 for my two solved modules in this step, is going to give me 13. And there's actually no penalty for going past the number, so let's just do right 9, left 13, and then don't even solve the other one. Just keep spamming that right button until you solve it. Oh, there it was. Uh, 9 plus 13 is 22. Subtract 20 gives me uh, 2. So 2 is when it actually clicked green. But there's no penalty for spinning past it, so why not just spam the button until you're done? Uh, let's do one more with the two-factor real quick, and then we'll turn that off, and we'll use these other rules. So, da -da 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 -da, da -da -da -da. Uh, this one, obviously, you saw all we really need is the number of batteries and the two factors. Uh, we have four batteries, so that's something. So our first step is going to be least significant digit plus four batteries. Uh, we have no solve module. Let's go ahead and solve one. Uh, so for our second number, it's going to be the most significant digit plus one, because I have one solve module. And again, we're not going to bother f solving for the third number, because we're just going to spin it till we're done. So uh, let's find our two factors. Uh, we only have one this time, so we don't have to actually add anything. And this this is going to make this even easier. Uh, we might actually can do this first one before it flips. Let's try. Uh, least significant digit is 3, plus 4 is 7. Most significant digit is a 5, plus 1 is 6. So we're going to do 7, 6, and then spin. 7, 6, spin. And there we do. We got it in before it changed. There's it changing over. Uh, this is going to change because now I have two solve modules. Uh, my least significant digit is 9, plus 4 is 13. Most significant is 3, plus 2 gives me 5. So we're going to do 13, 5, spin, done. Obviously, that's, that's not too bad. I mean, you've got to you got to be either quick or be patient with the two factors. And if you do get strikes, I'm pretty sure it... Oh, 1337 left on the clock. Nice. Uh, I'm pretty sure if you do spin, or if you do get strikes and the clock goes faster, then the two factor does change more often. So something to be aware of. Uh, but let's go ahead and pull up one more. Uh, this time you'll notice I don't have the two factor on. Most people don't play with the two factor because, as I said, it kind of eats up a widget spot. So you'll typically see no two-factor, and I threw six of these on here, because why not? Uh, so let's look through the rules again. First rule is to add the least significant digit of each two-factor, but I don't have those anymore. So instead, if there are no two-factors, use the last digit of the serial number plus the number of solved modules. So it's last digit serial plus solved modules. Add the number of batteries plus batteries. Okay. For my second number, I'm going to add the most significant, but I don't have any two factors, so I'm going to use the total number of modules on the bomb. In this case, I have six. I'm just going to write that though. Modules. Add the number of solved modules, so that's going to come into play again. 
uh, and then subtract, and then the third one we're just going to spin until we get. So you'll notice my first number is this three-step answer. My second number is this two-step answer. And I know what these numbers are. I can get them real quick. Uh, the last digit of my serial number is 9. So let's go ahead and make this a 9. I have 1, 2, 3, 3 batteries. And let's just go ahead and combine that. We got 9 plus 3. That's going to give me 12, plus my number of solved modules. Uh, total modules, I have 6. So that's going to give me 6, plus my number of solved modules. And then I spin. Now consider this for a second. Initially, I don't have any solved. So my first one's going to be 12, 6, 18 technically, but something. But after I solve one, my next one's going to be super simple too. It's going to be 12 plus the one I just solved is 13. 6 plus the one I just solved is 7. And something. And then I solve another one, and it's going to become 14, 8 something. And then it's going to become 15, 9 something. So, I mean, we can do this real quick and see. 12, 6, spin, done. 13, 7, spin, done. 14, 8, spin, done. And so on, so on. I can do this for all of them. I don't really even have to do any more calculations at this point. No significant ones, at least. Since I'm not worrying about the uh, actual ending position, I'm just spinning till I hit it. Uh, and a lot of people don't like that element of combination lock. I admit I too feel that if you've got multiple ones you can kind of cheese them if there's no two factors. And if there are two factors then you're losing out on battery holders, you're losing out on ports, you're losing out on indicators which affects so much more than just the two factor. Uh, so as a result you don't typically see this module a whole lot. It's It's got some interesting elements and if more things use the two factor then we could certainly that would that would certainly be a step in the right direction for making this one a little more popular probably or if we had a way to change the number of widgets we had if somebody makes a mod for that at some point then that would be another way that perhaps the downside of having a two factor can be overridden by that uh, until then though I mean when you basically got a couple additions. This is a pretty simple module to go through. Once you've done it a couple times, you'll probably just memorize these rules. They don't change. There's only, I mean, all of them have the subtract hand, so it's two steps, two steps, and then spin. So there's not a whole lot to memorize even on this. So that's that's combination lock. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, leave them in the section down below. Uh, until next time, uh, it's been Elias. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Don't explode. Bye.